Hi, in this position world champion Emmanuel Lasker as white played something very strong and won the game in just a few moves. Of course we are going to analyze it very soon, but first let's see how they got this position on the board. Keep watching. Lasker was playing as white and Pirk, another strong master from that time, was playing as black. So let's see what happened. E4, king spawn, c5, Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c6, d4, open variation, c takes, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, d6, bishop, e2, then e6. And this position belongs to Scheveningen defense. Sicilian is not only one defense, but I can play some different variations. For example, we can say dragon or Nidorf, very strong, or Cheveningen, as we can see here in this game. So after e6, white castles, black plays a6, then bishop e3, just developing, queen c7, improving the position of the queen, f4, and this is a very important moment of this game. Here, the master playing as black, Perk, decided to play knight a5, and this move is a little dubious, actually. The best move in this position, this is a very theoretical position, is a bishop e7, just preparing to castle. So black plays knight a5. The problem with this move is, uh, well, precisely, they are not developing, they are not castling. Black is starting actions when the king is still in, in the middle of the board. So this is something uh, we need to learn, we need to keep in mind. This is like, like a principle for the opponents. Don't start actions if you still have the king in the center. Also there are other important rules. Black is breaking here, like don't move twice the same piece in the opening or try to develop one piece in every move. Of course, Pirk has some interesting idea in mind. He wants to play knight c4, attacking the bishop and the pawn on b2. That should be annoying. And also if white trades the bishop for the knight, then they lose the two bishops, which should be a good advantage in an open position. But the problem, as I said, is the king in the middle of the war and still some development issues over here. So in this position, Lasker played f5. If your opponent has the king in the center, if you have development advantage, then it's going to be very well for you to open a little the position. And that's exactly what Lasker is trying to do. So f5, then black plays knight c4, bishop takes c4, queen takes c4, and of course we open the position, so the rook is going to be much better now. F takes e6, and well, the best move for black in this position is bishop takes e6, just continuing with development. Actually, Perk took here with the pawn, f takes e6, and this is the position we had at the beginning of the video. So it is why to move here, try to find the move Lasker played here. I will say it very soon. The move Lasker played in this position is the strong rook takes f6. Of course he's losing the exchange here, but he's removing an important piece for black. That knight was controlling a lot of uh, important squares all over the board. And also notice after this capture, look at black pieces, they are all in the back rank. All except the, you know, the queen on c4, not doing anything special but uh, it's the only piece uh, a little more active for black. So the position is going to be very well. We have like three minor pieces over here. The queen is going to go to h5 in the next move. We know that. And black king won't be able to castle. So that was the idea with this uh, exchange sacrifice, trying to exploit the situation of black king in the middle of the world. Let's see how this continued. Queen h5. After this check, black has three options. They can play either king e7, king d7, or king d8. After king e7, I suggest you to pause the video and try to find the way to continue if black had played king e7 in that game. I will say it right now. The way to continue here is a very interesting move. This pawn is controlling d5 and f5 and we have two knights ready to go to those squares 
So what we are going to do is to deflect that pawn. We play knight f5, and when black captures, then we play knight d5. So now we have knight, bishop, and queen, creating a lot of threats on black king. And this is going to be winning the game. Say king d7, then we check, king c6, queen c7 check. Of course, there are some ways to win here. I'm just going to say one line here. So king b5, a4, queen takes a4, and knight c3, and mate in the next, with rook takes a4. So after king e7, we don't really have to worry too much. There is this beautiful line with knight f5 deflecting and knight d5 later, later just winning the game. The other line is a uh, king d7. That was another possibility in, in that position. And the way to win here is by playing queen f7, bishop e7, and one more time, I suggest you to pause the video, try to find a very strong move for white here to continue with the attack and to continue putting pressure in black position. I will say it right now. The way to continue with the attack here was the nice, beautiful knight f5, taking advantage of this pin and this queen unprotected on c4, and now putting a lot of pressure on e7. Black can still play something like rook e8, but then rook d1 is just very strong. This pressure is just too big, and white is just going to be winning the game very soon here. This is decisive advantage. So after queen h5, the other line is the move we see in the game, and it is this king d8, and Lasker continues here with queen f7, uh, just uh, creating threats and continuing with the, the initiative on the position. And here black plays bishop d7, uh, they just didn't defend the pawn. After a move like bishop e7, uh, this is more or less similar to something, to some line we already analyzed, and it is the move knight f5. And the pressure is going to be very big, remember the bishop is coming over here, the rook is coming over d1, and we are taking e7, so this position is won. So probably because of this, Perk does not defend the pawn on, e on f6, and he's just playing bishop to d7. But, well, then uh, white is winning more or less easily. Queen takes pawn, black plays here king c7, and then queen takes rook. So right now, white has a piece up. Perk still tried here, uh, discovered, and played bishop h6. The idea is that after queen takes rook, he can take here with check and also get the knight. And Lasker saw he was losing this knight, and he said, well, if I'm going to lose this knight, I'm going to get, to get at least one pawn for that knight, one extra pawn. This is the, tactic, the tactical thing we call Desperado. He's playing here, knight takes e6, and after queen takes e6, now he's getting the rook. Now, this is not the same in this position here, after bishop takes e3, with the pawn on e6 as we have now without that pawn on e6. The position in the first play, place we have an extra pawn, but also there is a very nice square here on d5 for, for the knight, which is going to make the difference. So after king h1 is what uh, Lasker played, uh, Perk is resigning because he's completely lost. The question for the comments, do you think Lasker calculated all the variations after rook takes f6? Or maybe he just uh, played by intuition and said rook takes knight and queen check. I like my position, so I'm playing this. I would say my opinion. I think he might have calculated all the lines. They are not too long, and for a master like him, I think it was possible. That's my opinion. Let me know your opinion in the comments. So this is the video I wanted to show you today. I hope you have enjoyed it and you have learned something new here. If it was like that, help my channel with some like. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, so you get notifications for my next videos. Never stop believing. See you in the next.